segment. Keep it well. I'm going out. Don't touch that thing. They are mature. Now they understand it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have to wait for those who are yet to be convinced about some things. The hmm. church will not grow. Hmm. Hmm. The church will get messed up. Hmm. So we need to keep telling you this truth. Hmm. That's why he says it here. He says, Live as the children of light. Verse 9. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Hmm. We must be told the truth. That's what built us up. Hmm. That's why we are where we are today. If we have not been told the truth and not been taught the truth, we will not be relevant to you today. Praise you the Lord. Hallelujah. So Paul was helping the Christians living in Ephesus to stand firm in what they had believed. In fact, the entire letter is about the position of believers and also about the lifestyle and the practice of believers in a world or a center where people are not convinced of that faith. So what do you do? And you are living a mistake. They don't believe in what you believe in. So what do you do? They see you every day. They mock you. What do you do? They practice the evil right in your ears or in your eyes. What do you do? They speak those dirty words right in your ears. What do you do? So Paul is saying to the believers in Ephesus, one of the things you must do is not to partake. Do not share fellowship in their walks of darkness. Separate yourself from them. Believers, let us always have it in mind that the world will always think as the world and the church must think as the church. Hmm. Have it in mind, the world will always behave as the world. Hmm. It is left for the church to behave as the church. The world will always talk as the world. It is left for you now as a Christian to talk as a Christian. But most of the time what we do is we want to please the world. The world is not ready to please us. We want to get their approval and it looks like they are getting stronger and stronger than us. Because we feel that without them, we cannot do what we want to do. But they don't feel that way. In fact, they want to eliminate us. Let me help us. Earlier this year, I traveled to Turkey. Just to see again and again these biblical truths. And for some of us, you will understand with me that this particular Ephesus is in the present day talking. Now, this place, after some time, the gospel spread throughout the place. Paul prayed there, and somebody like John the Beloved died there. In fact, the mother of Jesus, that Jesus hand, handed over to John the Beloved as he was going to die on the cross, also lived and died in Ephesus. So this particular place and the entire nation of Turkey used to be 99% Christians and 1% Muslim. But today, it is the reverse. One percent Christians and ninety-nine percent Muslims. So all of this.
place where we had the churches, the seven churches in the book of Revelation, they are in Ephesus. They are in Turkey and beyond Ephesus in the entire land of Turkey. The seven churches in the book of Revelation. So as I traveled around, I began to see what I call monuments, historical sites that they have turned into tourism so that Christians can come and see what used to be theirs. I saw how they dressed the tomb of John the Beloved, a great man of God who was persecuted. History helps us to understand that all the disciples of Christ suffered martyrdom, except this man who died at over a hundred years of age, but he was persecuted. They threw him into boiling pot of oil for him to roast, cook, and die like an animal. But miraculously, he didn't die. So they looked at him and said, this man must be a mysterious man. How come they put somebody in a pot, poured oil there, set fire to it, and it was boiling, and they came to look at him and he was still alive. So they took him to the island of Patmos so that he will be eaten up there. There is no way of escape by wild animals. It was on that island that he received revelation. And eventually they expected him to die. He didn't die there. And he was brought back to Ephesus. There he now lived and died peacefully. But when I saw the tomb dressed with marble and broken pillars of temples or worship places around, I said they are showing us that this used to be a place of faith. A place in which Christ was called upon. But now it has become a tourist attraction. So you can see that the world that we are living in, they are not expecting Christianity to grow or spread. They want it to die. Mm. Mm. So pleasing them does not pay off. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The intention is as you please them, your faith dries off. Mm. Mm. That's why Paul had to say convincingly, have nothing to do with them. In that verse 11, mm -hmm. the King James Version says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us, let us look at 1 Corinthians. So that um, we can tie a few things together. First Corinthians chapter 5. What us to... I'll read verse 9, but before... Before, I, before reading the verse 9, um, after reading verse 9, I would uh, take us back a little bit. 1 Corinthians, are you there now? Yes, sir. Chapter, chapter number 5. Um, okay. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me read verse 9. I wrote unto you, in an epistle not to be company with fornicators. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now go back a little so that you can understand the context. From verse 3. Verse 9 has told us don't be in the company of someone who is a fornicator. But not just that sin alone. We're going to go beyond that. Now but he said, for I verily 
as absent in body but present in spirit have judged already as though 